Hey, it's Tim Hill here from SC Optima. We love talking about all things digital marketing related and in particular things that can help digital agencies grow since they are our biggest customer group here. So today I'm talking with Deepak Shukla, founder and MD of Pearl Lemon, a highly awarded SEO agency in London. Pearl Lemon has all your SEO needs covered from on-page SEO, off-page, link building, local SEO, e-commerce SEO, lead gen, and more. Deepak has grown the agency to over 25 staff and he runs a completely distributed team. So Deepak, thank you so much for joining me today. Ah, uh, no worries, man. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad that we got a chance to connect. Yeah, very glad too. I, I love your background. Like you've got such an interesting background. You're a trained British soldier. You've hitchhiked across Europe. Uh, competed in 25 marathons, two Ironmans, won a Muay Thai fight. How does all of this compare to running in an SEO agency? <laughs> uh, it's certainly different. Mark Cuban's got a book that I just read recently, and it's, I love the title, and it's very apt. He says, or it's titled The Sport of Business, and I think the, the comparable way that I look at it is I do see running an agency like a game. For me, it's like playing a, a really cool video game or in this context, sport, and just determining, you know, what are the levers that I need to pull to perform the best trick shot? How can I replicate that trick shot? How can I replicate that trick shot at will with even less preparation the next time? And how can I then make it repeatable and then move on to, you know, the next trick shot like Tony Hawk skateboarding or one of those video games you play where you unlock the special move and then you progress to the next round to, you know, defeat the next big boss. So Team Pearl Lemon maybe, like, how did you come up with this name? It's a really cool name. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? It's not like, I don't know, Shukla Communications or <laughs> blah, 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 marketing or, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit odd. I think that... So we in our household, and if we had the camera, I could actually show you. I'm looking across at my kitchen and there's some half cut lemons on our actual desk. So my partner, Daniela, she's Italian and she is a big fan of not using salad dressing or soy, soy sauce or any kind of dressing other than actual lemons because it's healthier and it still gives you that edge. So that was kind of at the time I was thinking of a brand or domain name lemons were, were on my mind and she happens to keep alongside her family like pearl necklaces are a big thing so dude it was i was looking for i was looking for a fruit anyway and i was just combining random names and i think subconsciously those two things came together and i thought ah oh, pearl lemon and uh, it was just from there man it was just from there and thankfully it, it people seem to like it probably because it's a bit unusual <laughs> well you know visiting the site like you just suddenly remember it because it's it is so different. It's so memorable. I think it's it's great. Thank you, uh, man. Thank you. <laughs> in terms of your origin story, you started the agency um, twenty sixteen in your mum's house and scaled it to nearly three hundred thousand pound business in in under two years. So, uh, tell us about that journey. Yeah, good question. I am um, so October two thousand sixteen was when I started, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, Tim. The, the first, I mean, the first thing that I really remember when I think back to those days is holy shit I don't really know what I'm doing I have never done anything that's b2b I I know that I'm good with people and I know that I enjoy marketing and I like I like competing I like I like sport so I kind of mix those three things together and you know, I, I, I do have and have continued to have a bit of a traditional Indian family. Dude, I was 30 years old and I was at my mum's place. It wasn't cool. It really, really wasn't that cool, especially in, in, in the UK, depending upon where in the world you're listening from, you know, in, for example, my partner's family, Italy, culturally people stay at home until they're 27, 28, and it's normal because yeah. then you go ahead and purchase maybe your first property with family help or, or something to that effect. And you know these guys finish university at 23, 24. UK, probably similar to yourself, um, you know, I hear, your, I hear your Aussie accent, Tim. 
it's it's yeah. you know you you, 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 you caught me <laughs> you come out of school at like 20 21 22 you go and get your city job and you're kind of meant to be out of the house so dude i was like 30 and i came back to my mom's place i had no i had, I had no bloody money so i was like Jesus Christ, I need to pull, pull, pull my finger out of my backside, so to speak, and, and make sure that I really, you know, graft. And I think that practically how that then played out in terms of what happened, it really was, I've, I've, I've got a big just in time mentality. You know, someone tells me that Deepak, you should really try, you know, finding a freelancer to assist you on Upwork. So great. Oh, wow. On Upwork, you can also post as an actual freelancer. So not only can I hire from Upwork, I can get hired on Upwork. Why don't I go and create a profile on Upwork? Oh wow, Deepak, there's this new platform that's called Bark. Bark, you can list your agency on. Oh great, okay. So then I went home and I'd just sign up to Bark and I'd optimize my Deepak. There's, so a series of conversations like that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at hearing what someone has to say about something and then trying it almost immediately. And I think that that has been a big saving grace for the growth of Pearl Lemon, that I, 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 I tend to listen to people that I think are smarter than myself or people that are doing something that's interesting. And then, I'll, I'll, dude, I'll just try it out. I'll try it out. I'll try it out. I don't let bias or strategy or the, the implications of what might happen stop me. You know, I just, I just try it out much in the same way that maybe I just emailed op, you know, SEO Optimus saying, yo guys, I use your tool. I get really fucking good results from it. I'd love to talk to you about it, right? And and you know, I could have I could have debated how I sent the email. I could have put it into a funnel. I could have done all of this stuff, but I just found the contact form. I sent a two line email, and and I and 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 I think that you know one of the key things to growing our agency, and I'd say this to anybody that that you know execution matters more. It really does, I think, and you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you can generate in terms of results if you just continually narrow the gap of, okay, well, let's think about it. You know, what do I want to say to Tim? How should you be like, dude, just, just send the damn email, man. Just, just, just send the email and love move that. on. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's the good old Facebook, you know, move fast and break things. Like, you know, done is better than perfect. It's, that's so good. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And, and touch wood, you know, it's, 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 it's just part of, I guess, a little bit who I am. And I, you know, I encourage anybody, it's, the difficult part is 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 quite you know the quietening of the conscious mind because it's very easy to balloon out all this stuff you know well there's this podcast platform tool there's this directory you could list on there's Upwork but then also uh, there's like Fiverr and then there's oh but what will people think if you're on Upwork or what if it's like ah oh, you know you don't know until you try so I think that we all should be empiricists a lot more that we should extract data from the world through actual experiments that we run ourselves and not allow other people's you know there's this whole thing that you should learn from other people's mistakes you hear it a lot from i think that's so bogus yeah. that's so bogus yeah. because what if i meet five people who fail at facebook ads does that does that mean i should then stop using facebook ads or i, I think the, the idea is you know and, and also there's so many individual variations for why people fail that I don't think it bears as much fruit to learn from someone else's failure. I totally agree. That's such a great uh, methodology, I guess, to, to business in general. Uh, and when, when you were actually starting out in the early days, do you remember how you actually got your first few customers? Yeah, absolutely. So per, Pearl Lemon was originally per, tr to give a nar the, the narrative timeline, um, let, let's let's give specifics. This is something that you learn from military training about to be super specific. So around mid October 2016, I partnered with a good friend of mine, Nick Ellison, who runs a company called per the um, per digital, he was doing a brand extension. So I was looking at starting my agency. So we said together, why don't we do per traffic? So per traffic was the original the, the original incarnation of Pearl Lemon. We partnered up until the point that we did maybe about the first 20 to 35,000 pounds in revenue. That initially came from his tranche of introductions. The challenge that we had with that in general, because why is per traffic now Pearl Lemon, was we had a different approach 
towards business. I'm, I'm a bit of a scruff and I'm quite casual and I'm a big fan of being distributed. Nick's team at that time were all in office, prided themselves on being in London, met every client that they went and saw. They had really nicely polished slide decks with immaculate grammar and a presentation style that was probably more, let's call it Anglo-Saxon or white middle class. Culturally, I'm like the antithesis of all of those things. So the real fucking struggle was that I think for the largest part, his clients he met met me and it just wasn't a fit. The, 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 the glove, the shoe, whatever you call it, did not fit. And we had such a different working style. Me going on Upwork, which we've made reference to, had, I think, a little bit of negative, potentially brand implications for per digital because of the way that we are branded and the, the fact that I'm a scruff and he's not, you know, I am t-shirts and shorts, Nick is suit, suit and tie. And, and, and that's a good um, analogy for, for why we ultimately split up. And then therefore, when it came to my own type of lead acquisition, dude, I went on Upwork. I was looking for freelancers and I thought, oh, hang on, holy shit. I can post my own profile on Upwork. Then I posted my own profile on Upwork. Then I started writing like LinkedIn status updates that were filled with errors and did have problems, but it was really outreach fundamentally. If I'm being frank, it was yeah. optimizing a profile on Upwork. It was doing LinkedIn lead generation using uh, you know, several of the local browser plugins that you can use for scrapers. And it was messaging 20 people a day, writing status updates. A couple of my status updates went viral, uh, which was great. And, and that, the, the inbound outbound of LinkedIn plus the outbound inbound, if you will, it was all outbound until you become top rated on Upwork because you're just pitching people. And I was taking the $20 jobs. I was taking the $50 jobs because I wanted to build my reputation. And also, let's not forget, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, dude. As you opened, I was doing this, the military stuff or the marathons. I didn't know how to run a business myself. And um, I, I, I got a great education ultimately by not having any pride to take on like, crap jobs. I, I've met people along the way. And I, I think it we do ourselves an injustice when in the beginning, you have a set expectation of the price point that someone should pay and what you should deliver for that. And I'm a, I'm a big believer of the, 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 the Grant Cardone ethos, someone that, that I admire and whose books that I've read, particularly the 10x rule, I think he talks about it. He's like, man, you should love your shittiest clients. The ones that nickel and dime, he's like, they will teach you everything you need to know about how to run your business. Because if you can please that guy who wants blood and has only got, you know, a $500 budget and he's up your ass every day, dude, you're going to be like a fucking dream when you get the guy who's got $5,000 and who is not ever up your ass and is really polite and friendly because the little guy teaches you everything to become way, way better than those other guys who've only ever dealt with the $5,000 client. And, and, and that's so been the best ever education for me yeah. in terms of why um, I think it's helped Pearl Lemon be successful. That's amazing. And fast forward to today, how have things changed? Or I guess, what, what does prospecting look like for you now? Sure. So um, prospecting now, I mean, we're still on Upwork because I like to do some sales. So I enjoy it. My Upwork is entirely managed by one of my team. I just get on the phone call when people come in. Inbound is our driver of new business. We generate around 160 leads inbound a month via Google at the moment, and it's trending up. So I'm told that that's apparently quite a good number for an SEO agency yeah. to generate in terms of inbound leads. So um, we'll wake up and we'll have between three to eight leads inbound that have contacted us. And I've have already booked into my sales guys calendar, have submitted a contact us form, have submitted an SEO Optima form. And, and, and then depending upon what tier of lead they are, the sales team make chase or turn up to the phone call. So, so now it's 80% um, inbound, but you know what? I'm still, I'm still, I guess, uh, a sales and communication guy at heart. We're still doing cold email. We're still like, but, but I, I attach yeah. less meaning to it as much as I used to. I mean, you guys have so many reviews online and your online reputation is, is so highly regarded. Did you plan that in the early days? Because it's a long game, right? You know, building reputation over time. Did you plan that early? 
Uh, I think that I felt I'm a great skeptic. I believe that almost everyone, bar no one, bullshits in some way. And I think about every time I go into an engagement, what would I want? What would I need to convince? Because you know what? I'm still a British Indian dude. I will still think about every penny that I spend in terms of how I grow my business. And for me, yeah. for example, to make a two and a half, three thousand dollar, five thousand dollar a month decision on someone else to hire an external consultant, I, I've got quite an anally high expectation of what delivery should look like and my assumption is that because it's how we're all built to think is that the way i see the world is the way that everyone sees the world so therefore i'm a great skeptic tim's probably a skeptic so i should tell tim specifically about the results i've generated i should show him the screenshots he should be able to track my email history he should be able to identify when i make a casual reference to my first client he should be able to google that client call him or be able to find an audit trail that reflects that so i think that whilst i didn't anticipate now if i google us i'm like jesus christ it's we've got like stars and stripes everywhere it's, it's pretty good yeah. Um, yes. it, 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 in the beginning, I just always made sure that if, if anyone left with a positive experience, I've been, I've been, I think I've been fairly decent at immediately saying, Tim, we had such a great podcast together. Are you okay to leave a review under Deepak Shukla, Trustpilot? Just saying I had Deepak on our there. show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, so I've done, um, things like that always and often. Yeah. I, I don't like the idea. I don't think that anyone who gets positive feedback should make sure it's on a public forum and and anytime anyone says well done to you you should make sure that's documented in the form of a review and i think that most people think Great point. most people think that you need to wait until the en end of a commercial engagement no you can go at the midpoint when you delivered the first tranche of work and you can ask them for a review on the basis of the first portion of work we've even got a review platform dedicated to talking about the sales process with Pearl Lemon. So we have people that leave reviews who had an amazing conversation with our head of sales, but even if they couldn't afford to take on our services, they leave a review about us as to what their sales experience with us was like. That is awesome. Yeah. Because cool. why not? They're like, you know what I had, you know, good. whilst we're not working with Pearl Lemon at the moment, I can say, you know, I had an amazing conversation with their head of new business he gave me some really interesting insights as to what I should do in turning next steps and I'm definitely gonna be coming back to them hopefully in three to six months but on the basis of everything I've seen I couldn't recommend them enough why don't people do that love it I mean oh, that's that's excellent so so yeah that's we've excellent. got we've got a dedicated like upsell and downsell but from a review perspective as well so my sales guy will generate more reviews than he does sales per week because you know let's say he closes one deal a week but for every one deal he closes he'll generate four 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 reviews for our business because they'll have 25 phone calls and several of them will be going to be like you know what i gave you some advice is it cool if you just leave a review just talking about if you felt you got value from because when they're on the phone saying oh dude that's amazing that makes so much sense document that don't just leave the call without right. them writing it up and you know what it makes it's sense really and yeah. people people are happy to they're like you know what i did get great value yeah. from this call you gave me some cool insights and uh, i'm yeah. happy to, to to say that publicly and and that's how um we that systematically have been able to build in reputation management into our um kind of process and you've also looking at the site you know like another kind of de-risking point is that you offer the 90 days um you know engage you for 90 days to improve search rankings and and increase organic traffic i guess what do you what are the things that you do in that 90 day time frame so we i think that what we do is maybe we do things aggressively we'll fix as many technical problems as we can within a 7 to 14 day period we don't take perhaps the traditional route of agencies that will produce a lot of reporting documentation and present, for example, a report week three as to a technical on-page audit, a link building audit. Like we, we do do that, but we ask for CMS access day one. We ask for Google Search Console, Google Analytics access day one. We ask um, for them to create an email account on their behalf, on our behalf, so they can actually monitor our audit trail. So they'll see our link building outreach because I'll ask for a 
uh, outreach at seooptima.com email. So we're pretty unusual in that you'll see actually what we're doing and we'll be like, yeah, you can, that, that, that's your audit trail. Just log into the yeah. email, bro, and check out what we're doing. And we will then report after 70% of the problems have been resolved. So I always say that, guys, you know what? I'd like to identify, report, and fix. I don't want to identify, report, wait, then you come back, then we fix. Because you know what? My developer or, you know, my head of technical SEO, when he's looking at issues with, um, you know, your page loading speed because you need to install maybe the lazy load plugin so that your videos kind of load last because they're not the first thing people will go to or there's an issue with a piece of JavaScript that you've got. I said, if he's looking at the problem, let him fix the fucking problem immediately and then just tell you after the fact and he will do that when it's an additional three minutes of work where it's more complex and more involved. The human, naturally you come back to it, but there's a lot of things that someone who's competent with understanding all of these problems can systematically fix, 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 fix. And then you combine that with the other side of the team who give me email access. We've been doing this day in, day out. We do a lot of, I come from a cold email background, how we built the agency. So uh, we just immediately start outreach like, Within first week, do keyword mapping, identify what keywords are going after. We start sending out 30 emails a day from like the first week. So, so we're, we're just, I'd say that the key thing we do differently is we do all of the same stuff, but we just do it way more fucking aggressively. Yeah. Can I ask you about your team uh, that, that supports you? I mean, I, I find it really interesting that you have a distributed team. I mean, you, you're like us at, at SE Optum or a distributed team as well, but I, I find that a lot of agencies are co-located and can go distributed, especially like during the pandemic time, but have really struggled and have looked forward to being back in the office. Now, you, you, this, is, this is reality for you is distributed. So yeah, tell me about the, the pros and cons as you see it. So I think the cons are that you, mm, miscommunication is a big con. I think um, lack of supervision is a big con. I think that development being slower in terms of like perhaps innovation perhaps can be a con so i think that they're they're cons that that that, that you need to be mindful of and, and and manage there's absolutely huge out advantages though that outweigh it processes become infinitely stronger when you're remote because you video and document everything otherwise it doesn't work so i think that remote is slow to start but faster to scale that's my feeling of it because it's slow because every time you get a new process or someone discovers a new thing, you can't communicate that immediately and with effect across the whole team unless you are in the mode and habit of recording your screen, sending it to everybody, and then someone puts that into a process and then it gets distributed across the team and, and, and then it allows you to scale learning. So I think that the challenges are those that we've outlined and, and also there needs to be like really solid processes behind it. And I think that if you get into the mode of documenting and building sy systems, that enables you to really like have some freedom. So I have more time than I've ever had. And, and we, we don't, we're not a big agency. We make maybe 55,000 pounds a month, which is about 65, $70,000, but we're skate, we're trending up and um, you know, we're, we're extremely profitable. Our clients are very happy. And it works because of the processes that we've got in place. So I can take someone who's great technically, who's horrendous in front of clients, but it doesn't matter because we've got 47 email templates that they know that they can use based upon certain types of delivery. So it does take some time, but it, it can work really well, especially now when there's a great labor market, there's some really smart, like we've expanded our team significantly because we've got great people that are much more cost effective now than they were three months ago. They're like, dude, you know, I've just graduated from fucking Berkeley or from Yale and I've not got my job. And uh, I, I, because we've got so many training videos, we can take anyone and we can teach them what we need to know within two weeks. We'll be like, you're a smart kid. Watch our 79 videos, which I've recorded anyway publicly with Tim. And once you've watched all of them and you take all of our quizzes, then let's start. So that's how we're able to take untrained people, train them extremely quickly, and, and then they can go. So we've got, for example, I've got an intern who watched seven of my PR videos, and she generates, you know, three higher domain authority links a week for Pearl Lemon, getting us features, getting us press mentions, 
And, you know, she, you know, I, I pay her a couple of hundred dollars a month because she just learned the process and she's, and that was yes. it. And it was like, I, don't, I didn't need any contact time. There was all of the processes in place and then you can scale the stuff like that. So that will never happen. I think when you're in house, because you'll never have that need to record videos. You'll never have that need to document processes in the same way. Oh, totally. You know, as a, as a previous agency guy, there was always that desire to document things. And there's in agencies where you're co-located, you always feel like, yeah, you know, let's document it. But in reality, because you're all there, like it actually doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you so don't, you this has forced you to, to really, really do it. And now you're reaping the benefits of, of having a really solid, solid process, which is documented completely. Touch wood. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, 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 and that's, 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 I think, been, been, been a big thing for us. And uh, that's, that's just the, anything new comes up, we're like, what's the process here? Let's quickly write an email template based upon this common objection that we get. Um, you know, we're, we're probably the only agency, I'm positive, we've got like a 7,000 word link building guide about how we build links that we share with our clients. We've got literally about 110 FAQs about with our reports that contain about 25 videos. Everything is about how can I achieve inbox zero with my clients? So how can I have it that Tim signs and pay like, so we've got a client who's paying us $5,000 a month. So they're two and a half months in, so they've sent us twelve and a half thousand dollars. Dude, I've never had a fucking phone call with them. Never. They signed on for the sales team. Yeah. They got the emails. They got the documentation. They got the processes. They got the reports. I never speak to them. They don't want it. They, don't, they haven't asked for a call. So I'm like, okay, great. And that is how we're really profitable because we've got 27 clients. Dude, I still don't have a project manager because I don't actually have a need for someone because everything is done on email. My head of S and, and we've, you know, I've got the 110 FAQs. Every time someone asks something new, <clears throat> we put it into our process and we accept that when anything's slightly different, we're like, build it into the process, build it into the process. And how can I get it to the extent that, and we also do uh, WhatsApp voice notes with our clients. So everything is um, also on WhatsApp. So we do, don't do meetings because you say, I've got a question. I send you a voice note. You're like, oh, well, fuck it. Let's cancel our meeting later. Don't worry about it. That, that was all I wanted okay. to know. They actually prefer it because they get, oh, hey, Tim, yeah, great question about the keywords that you suggested. Here's what I think you should do. Option one, option two. Also, I've got this course that I actually made ab upon it from the old content. Why don't you watch this 20, 25 minute video and it will probably answer some of the questions you need to know. I would also highly recommend your content team watch it as well. Deepak, that's fantastic. I'm gonna get the whole team to watch it right now. Don't worry about the meeting later. Talk soon, bye. Done. That's our meetings. You know, in those instances where, where you do get the odd question from, from clients, what are you hearing? What are the kind of like hot topics at the moment that clients are struggling with or asking you for advice on? Yeah, so I get, you get kind of topical questions like Deepak, I'm told that, you know, Google are taking over page one from a paid perspective because organic has been pushed down. That'll be a question that I got like yesterday. Uh, Deepak, what do you think about the fact that I want to build my site a little bit like a new site. I want to sign up email subscribers, so I'm not taking a keyword focus. What's the, what's the advice here in terms of link building, uh, mm. Deepak? So then I'll take those two questions and we'll turn them into FAQs. I'll record videos and I'll put it back into the FAQ sheet. And then that goes on to onboarding when all of the new clients come in. And that's how I'll do it. Yeah. I love that approach. It's just it continually adding to the knowledge base. Exactly. So then your clients do your work for you because yeah. it's like, you know what? The shitty clients who ask all of the questions build your processes for you. They do. Yeah. You don't need to because yeah, shit, your, so your, your clients will. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, what's actually changing in the COVID-19 climate now? So what has changed in terms of business as usual and either processes or even client client issues? So I think that due diligence has been a much bigger thing now with some of our clients like you know what what are you doing or how does it work and the way that we do things and we have always done things has been very helpful you can access the email well we won we won a contract with a law firm solely on the basis that our oh, deepak you're the only firm who said that you can we can access all your emails they're like no one no one does that we're like brilliant brilliant yeah. And now they don't want to upgrade, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's all because I, I don't know if we're the best, but it doesn't matter. I know that we're the most transparent. But yeah, broadly speaking, to answer your questions more specifically, um, how has it changed? So there's more of a request for due diligence. From an inbound perspective, we're getting businesses that I don't think 
have really looked online, contact us, contact us now. So we're seeing, I think, a greater breadth of um, inquiries that we're getting. So, so from, from, from a bit more non-traditional industries, we're getting like, um, like, I know like manufacturing businesses contacting us or like people doing like, uh, I can't keep up because as I said, we get 150 plus leads a month. A lot of them don't qualify because we'll charge out at maybe $3,000 a month and up. So there's, there's like a, there's like a lot of stuff that, 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 that isn't a fit or, but, but that's yeah. changed. Um, and then, you know, I think that COVID-19 for all of its challenges is the best ever thing that happened for the digital marketing industry. I mean, we're still a young industry. COVID will favor companies that have also sought to build brand and made, because, because also I'm effectively selling a commodity. I don't, you know, an SEO agency doesn't inherently have a unique feature. <laughs> not, not, not really. I mean, obviously you look to, 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 to build them. The point is, is that you can differentiate yourselves, I guess, from a, from a service driven perspective. Yeah. Last question. 2021, what's next for Pearl Lemon? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I mean, I don't know broadly. I think like I'm having fun, you know, we, 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 so for Pearl Lemon as an agency, I want us to become, uh, continue, well, continue, become a, a brand that's just recognized for doing cool things. I don't want us to just be an SEO agency. We, we recently set up the website Pearl Lemon Properties because I want to get into the property game because I've had a shitty experience working with um, property uh, sales agents. And I'm like, you know what? I could, I could deliver a service better than you without knowing what the service is. I, 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 I think that for 2021 with Pearl Lemon, it's, it's continued to grow. Like from a metrics perspective, we do 150 leads a month. I want to get it to 300 leads a month. I want to, I want to double it. That's like metric one. That will change everything else. But then broadly speaking, man, I'm just, it's still a game. I'm still having fun, you know? We set up Pearl Lemon Properties, the website, and it's, it's stupid, really. We're trying to rank for, like, real estate investing in Italy and property investment in London. And do, people are like, dude, like, what do you know about that? It's like, well, I don't know. I bought property, had a shitty experience with my sales agents. I looked at what they were doing, and I thought, hey, motherfucker, I think I could do that better than you. And I'll, I'll, I'll rank the website, I'll get some leads, and I'll figure it out when that happens. And um, I think that, ultimately, that comes down to good communication, and good customer service in an industry where the expectations are relatively low, you can probably yeah. do quite well. Well, thank you, Deepak. It was a pleasure chatting with you. I really appreciate your time today. I uh, did. No, I had I had a great time. I, you know, as I said, I use SEO Optima. It's you know, we, we generate twenty five percent of our revenue from leads that come in through Optima. So as we call it, like you see our WhatsApp screenshots or chats. Eon, our head of sales, would be like, you can book me. So they're the calendar tool we use. And then it'll be like, da 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 It'll be like, Optima, da 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 And they'll be like the chat. So I see your name every fucking day on my WhatsApp messages, dude. <laughs> top of mind, top of mind. <laughs> it is, it's like that. It's also why I reached out. It was like, oh, guys, you know, I make a lot of money from you fucking guys. We should talk and connect. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> Uh, Deepak, thank you so much again. Check out Pearl Lemon online. So their website is pearllemon.com. Follow them on Twitter at Team Pearl Lemon. And join us next time when we chat with another agency founder about starting and growing their digital agency. I'm Tim Hill. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.